welcome to the Codfather. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make we're going to make a uh, a seafood lasagna with fresh shrimp, scallops, sea scallops, and cod. And then we have the uh, the whole milk regatta right here, which we're going to add some eggs to, some fresh parsley. Fresh parsley's right here. We have these beautiful eggs that a uh, a gentleman that comes into into Twin Seafood. He has, a, uh, he has a bunch of chickens that he, he grows, and we supply him with some of the, uh, the food for his chickens, and he brings us by these eggs. They're beautiful. So you guys are going to love that in there. And then also in the, uh, in the regatta, we're going to put eggs. We're going to put a little salt and pepper and some fresh parsley. I may have already said that. And then we're going to make a, it's not going to be a red sauce lasagna. We're going to make a, um, an Alfredo sauce lasagna, which we're going to use heavy cream. We're going to use a little bit of butter, like we always do, <laughs> right? We're going to use some, uh, some mozzarella cheese just to get a, a little bit of nice consistency. And then, obviously, fresh Parmesan and black pepper. So that's going to be, that's going to be our, uh, our lasagna. And also, we have, we have, these are kind of cool. So we got just fresh pasta sheets here. You don't have to cook them before you make a lasagna with them. And they're beautiful because they just they sit nice and flat and it's a fresh product so they're really really very nice we're gonna make a garlic bread bruschetta so beautiful delicious right <laughs> so what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna make a um, we're gonna soften some some butter we're gonna add a little bit of garlic to it we're gonna add a little bit of grated cheese and we're gonna add some uh, some nice minced garlic, which we already minced in olive oil. We're going to add that right to the, um, right to the butter. Then we're going we're gonna to take this nice loaf of bread. This bread is from Canada. We sell this at the store. It's delicious. It's par-baked. You just drop it in the oven for like five minutes or so. It's like you, uh, if, you, if you took, a, took an apron out of your closet, threw some, power, some uh, flour on it, your husband would think that you were cooking all day in the kitchen. Or your wife, whoever does the cooking. We're going to show you how to prepare the garlic bread bruschetta. So first thing you need to do is you need to make sure you have a, uh, a sharp knife. So this is called a steel. And the way you find out whether your steel is actually uh, still in good shape is you just put the knife to the top of it and you'll feel a little magnetic pull, right? So that'll tell you that your steel is actually in good shape. Now what you want to do is very simply you just hold your steel kind of at a at a uh, upward angle and you just bring your knife down on both sides right very simple you'll see that the steel has a protector right here which will protect your thumb so you don't chop your thumb off right and then you just once you get a feel for it you just get it going so do you have to do that at an angle yeah you have to you have to keep your knife at an angle you don't want it to be flat good point CJ right so you don't want your knife to be flat on top of the steel. You have to keep it at an angle like that because that'll put, that'll put the edge back on. So just so you know, basically what we're doing here is we're just putting the edge back on the knife. To actually get the knife to be sharp, you need to send it out to a professional. But this will, this will keep your edge on your knife while, you're, uh, while you have your knives at home. We're just going to cut it once the long way and then cut it right down the middle. We'll have four nice pieces. Now you always want to use a serrated edge knife when you're cutting when you're cutting bread. You don't want to use the knife I just sharpened. The um, the straight edge knives they tend to slip off and it's very easy to cut yourself. So the serrated edge knife knife is so much better, so much better for uh, for cutting bread. And you can see this bread is nice. It has a lot of these air pockets in here. So what that's going to do is it that's going to that's going to suck in the um, the garlic butter and everything. And the, uh, and the juices from the tomatoes and the onion and all that stuff, it's going to suck that right in. And it's great. This is great for bruschetta or garlic bread or whatever. You don't want that, um, that full bread that doesn't have the nice air pockets in here. Okay? okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare the butter for the, the garlic bread. So how many te uh, te teaspoons do we? Well, we have about a half a pound of butter in there. What we did with that was we put it into the microwave to soften it a little bit. 
Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna add a little bit of garlic. We're gonna throw a couple of teaspoons of garlic in there. That might now be that, heavy. That might be heavy, but garlic's good, right? Garlic's good, man. You know. Yeah, it's real good. Just make sure. Here, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna show you what you gotta carry around with you. So if you're gonna eat all that garlic, <laughs> you gotta carry this around with you all the time. All right, little bit of gum, nice. Especially if you're going over to the little girlie's house for a little smooch. There you go. And then another one? Yeah, so two of those. All right. We're going to add two of those. Then we're going to add a, uh, a couple of, again, a couple of teaspoons of uh, grated cheese. This grated cheese is a uh, Picorino Romano cheese, which is, you know, kind of strong but delicious. And then a little bit of uh, a little bit of black pe pepper, maybe just one one good teaspoon of black pepper. Yeah, there you go. yeah. And then we're gonna mix that in. We're gonna we're gonna use a um, yeah. We can use the spoon. Uh, Definitely pretty... use the garlic spoon, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Just adds a little bit more flavor. You can see that'll incorporate nice right into the butter. And the key is to keep it to do it soft, right? So you gotta have that soft. And once, when you make this, a good thing to do is if you have extra, you just take that, you put it, you kind of form it into a roll, you put it in some saran wrap, and then you can, uh, you can put it into the freezer. So like if you make, a, make yourself a nice steak or something, you can take that out, you just cut off a couple of slices from, that, uh, from the roll that's in the saran wrap, and after your steak is done, you just put that on top, delicious, perfect. Okay, this is coming out nice. So you can see nice. how that's nice, right? You see how nice that is? Get a it nice, has a nice, nice, te nice texture to it. Make sure it's mixed all the way through. You don't want to just get butter on one side. You want all that mixed up. There you go. Looks delicious. I could just eat a spoonful of that. All right. I'm not going to do it, <laughs> but I could just eat a spoonful of that. Okay. All right, so what are we going to do next there, CJ? Take your spatula. rubber spatula. Rubber spatula. Yeah. Just gonna get some of this. Go nicely. And we're gonna put a nice big helping on there. Make sure you save enough for the four though. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to use it all. That is a half a pound of butter. I think we got plenty. All right, let's let's go across all of them before we start doing it. All right. Oh man, that looks delicious, just like that. It smells great. Doesn't that smell good? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we need. We need a little bit of smell-o-vision. Be a nice. New, that's a new one, smell-o-vision? Yeah. That's right. when you can smell the food through the TV. Oh, I like it. Marion words over here. Yeah. Who said we just cut fish? I think we kind of just cut fish. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but again, we got a store in Acton. We got a store in Concord. Um, we do takeout in both. We have fresh fish in both. And uh, in Concord, we've been there almost 29 years and Acton we opened in 2011 so we've been there about nine years come down and visit if you haven't been there CJ will walk you through the store nice if I'm there they don't let me stay in the store all that much anymore so if I'm there I can uh, I can help you out as well <laughs> <laughs> so I was going light you could actually hit that one more time we're gonna hit this first one again one more time a little more yeah I went light because I didn't think I had enough but we're good we got plenty. Oh yeah, that looks delicious. That's the garlic bread pot, right? Wash my hands. So, what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna put that on a cookie sheet. We're gonna bake it at about 350 for about six minutes or so, just to get that butter melted so that it sinks down into the bread. And then we're gonna make. We're gonna, right now we're gonna make the mixture for the um, for the bruschetta that's going to go on top of that. So, tomatoes. Most of the time we do it at the store, we just pit them real quick. You come in like a circular angle and you just work your knife all the way around. You get a nice little boom, pops out. No more, no more pit. Right, so we, we, we do that because, uh, you know, if you're, we take that out, the reason is because when we're cutting tomatoes for sandwiches, we don't want to lose that end piece. Right, so we keep that end piece and use it for salad tomatoes, so we don't have any waste. It's a little small. I'm gonna stick with the small knife. Okay. All right, so he's cutting them up all nice, you know, kind of small, but you want to have something to bite into, right? You don't want to just have like mush. So 
He's going to cut those up. He's going to put those in this bowl right here. You can just do two for now, CJ. All right. Take your time with that. Once again, you need to have a sharp knife to do this. Tomatoes are tough, too, because, you know, the skin, if your knife isn't sharp, it'll slide right off of there. So you need to have a good sharp knife while you're doing that. Make sure you don't get cut. Take your time doing it, you know. All right, so there's the tomatoes. We're going to throw those in the, uh, in the bowl. All right. Right? And then we're going to take, CJ, just cut half that red onion for now. We're gonna take the uh, we're gonna take a nice red onion. Red onion is nice because it has a but a little bit more of a um, a uh, uh, pungent flavor, right? Than the white onion. White onion white, white onion is good to cook with and everything like that. But we're gonna keep this red onion raw in the bruschetta, right? So he's just gonna cut that up into slices and then he's gonna chop it so that it's um, it's nice and fine in with the tomatoes. CJ, we're going to have to work on your knife skills, kid. Yeah, I cut fish, not vegetables. <laughs> not bad. Hey. Yeah, it's all good, as long as you keep the blood out of the pitcher. It's the most important thing. I've never cut myself. <laughs> yeah, don't say that. <laughs> oh, no. Never say never, baby. Anyway, so he's, he's chopping that up nice and fine. And then... Um, and then what we're going to do is, real simply, we're going to add a little bit of black pepper to that. We're going to add a little bit of grated cheese. We already put the garlic butter on the bread, so we don't need to add any garlic into this mixture here. And then we're going to put some nice, um, some nice first press uh, olive oil okay. on there. So, All right. yeah. So we're going to we're going to put maybe two 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 uh, two teaspoons of grated cheese in there. We're going to put a, uh, a teaspoon of the uh, black crushed pepper, which is nice. I never really liked black pepper, but I don't know. As I get older, or as I get old, I guess, I do. it's starting to grow on me a little bit. I kind of like it a little bit. And then we're, going to just, we're just going to put a little bit, of, little bit of olive oil in there. The onions are starting to make my eyes a little red. You're going you know to cry, baby? Maybe. All right. That's all right. You can cry. All you right. have to. All right. Then we're going to mix that. We're going to make sure that we got a nice mix in there. Oh, look at that. Doesn't that look good? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Delish. Delish, baby. That's nice. Okay. That's looking good. Make sure you get all the way at the bottom, get everything on there. Yep. Plenty of olive oil in there. I don't know. Maybe we put a couple of tablespoons in there. I'm not positive of the amount. I kind of kind of cook with my eyes. All right, that's it right there. Yeah, so what we're, so as you can see, we got the, uh, the mixture for the bruschetta. We got the garlic bread here. So we're going to take, we're going to take the garlic bread. We're going to, uh, we're going to take it, put it in the oven for at about 350 for about six, seven minutes. We're going to take it out and CJ, grab the mozzarella cheese a little bit. We're going to take the, uh, we're going to, we're going to take the garlic bread out. Then we're going to add, we're going to put the uh, bruschetta mixture on top of the bread and we're going to put a little bit of nice shredded mozz right on top of that, under the broiler, couple minutes, basta, perfecto. We are now going to do our preparation for our seafood lasagna. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we got some nice fresh baby spinach here and what we're going to do with that is we're going to wilt it down. Now, you can use fresh spinach, you can use frozen spinach because basically what we're going to do with this here is we're going to, we're going to add this, we're going to chop it, we're going to chop this up fairly fine, and we're going to add it to our regatta, okay? So we're going to wilt this down, and we don't need to add anything to this. No salt, no pepper, nothing, because there's so many flavors already in, in, in the, uh, that's going to be in the regatta, that's going to be with the, uh, the shrimp and the scallops and the fish. And we're making a nice, uh, we're going to make a nice um, Alfredo sauce. The spinach can just sit, we're going to let it wilt down, and that's about, that's all we need to do. 
Now, while that's working, we're going we're gonna to stop preparing our Alfredo sauce. Now, I like, to use, I like to use heavy cream. You can use half and half. You can use whole milk, you know, whatever you want to do. But I set up a double boiler here because we do not want it to burn, right? So I like to use heavy cream and simply because it just takes so much less time to get it to the consistency that you want. Hey, Joey, what's double boiler mean? So a double boiler is basically, it's just, it's this here stainless steel bowl on top of a pot of boiling water because you don't want the, the, um, the heavy cream to just be sitting on top of the, the burner because it'll, it'll burn. It'll, it'll, uh, so it's essentially know. just moving the food from the actual heated contact. Right, exactly. So you don't okay. want, you don't want this, uh, right on top of the heat because it will burn on the bottom. Just like if you were heating up chowder or whatever it may be. So what I have over here, so we had the heavy cream. I got some nice, just uh, unsalted butter, grated cheese, black pepper, and the mozzarella. Now, a lot of people, when they make an Alfredo sauce, they don't use any mozzarella. But I like to use a little bit of mozzarella because it makes the, uh, it makes the consistency or the texture of the, um, of the Alfredo sauce a little bit smoother. So it doesn't have the, 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 um, the Parmesan cheese tends to not melt so well inside of this, so we're not gonna uh, we're not gonna just use that. So I have um, I have two quarts of um, heavy cream in here. Right, we want to temper it, so we want it to get Enjoy. a little bit warm. Okay, we get a little heat in there now. So we're going to throw a half a pound of butter in there. And we want to let that melt nice in there. You can see that our spinach is starting to work over here. You notice when spinach starts to start to wilt down, it gets loses all of its uh, all of its body. So we're going to add the rest of this right in there. Some people like to pull off the stems. Me, it don't matter. I don't think it matters. It don't matter. I don't think it matters. I like the stem. It all tastes the same. You know, if you got time and you you want to do that, you can, but you really don't have to. And also, if you didn't want to. I may mean, have already said this, but if you didn't want to use fresh spinach, you can use frozen spinach. I like the flavor of the fresh. I think it's so much better. So that's why we're going to use fresh spinach. And the spinach is going to go right into the regatta cheese. You've got to have something healthy in that lasagna, you know, besides the fish. That's how we stay trim, right, that's Joe? That's how we stay nice and trim. There you go. Right. We're going to the gym right after here anyway. <laughs> so now we have that, that nice... Uh, the butter is all melted into the heavy cream, and we got a nice, uh, a nice temperature in here. So like I say, we're going to add some of that nice grated mozzarella, which is going to give it a nice texture. It's going to thicken it up. Now, if you use, if you use milk or if you use um, like a half and half or something like that, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make a roux, right? So a roux is just basically flour. And, uh, and butter, right? Because you're going to need something to thicken up that flour. I mean, to thicken up that... Uh, Mixture? Yeah, the, the, just the regular, if you just use whole milk, or if you just use... You can see how that's getting nice and thick now, see? See how that's just coming off the... Wow, look at that. You want Does some that more cheese? Nice? Right? No, we got enough. We got enough mutts in there. Look at that. See, it's starting to get thick. Wow. Then we're gonna add. Let's forget about the spoon because I don't need the spoon. That's a waste <laughs> of time. We're gonna put some parmesan in there, which is gonna give it all that nice flavor. All that nice flavor. Yeah, we're gonna put that all in there. Might as well, right? We yeah. came so far. Yeah. 
I know. <laughs> What's the difference? See how we got that nice texture now? Ugh. See how beautiful that is? See how beautiful that is, CJ? It's a wonderful thing right there. And that's why we're going to use a double boiler, because we don't have to worry about this sticking to the bottom. We don't have to worry about it burning on the bottom. None of that. That's why this is so much easier. All right? Then we're going to add a little bit of black pepper. Now I like, I like the black pepper in here. Like I said earlier, I never liked black pepper, but now, I don't know. I'm getting old. I'm getting weird. Well, spice is the meaning of life, right? That's what they say. I don't know. I heard it one time. I thought variety was the spice of life. I don't know. A little bit more pepper. Either way, it sounds pretty good, though. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to just let that cook down a little bit, which is going to thicken it up. But while that's working, we're going to show you how we're going to how we what we're going to do with the regatta cheese for the lasagna. We got our fresh parsley already diced up, nice and fine, good to go. We're going to add that in the mixture. We're going to take a ricotta right here, and to start off, we're just going to use half of it. Get a nice throw it up in there. So this is a nice whole milk regatta. You know, they have, the, uh, they have the skim milk stuff and all that stuff, but for what we're putting in this lasagna, use the whole milk, right? You're going to have to go on a diet after this anyways. Or just get to the gym, right, Joe? I'll get, get, to, the get, get to the gym. One, gym or the right? <laughs> One or the other. I'll go to the doctor. Might have to do that. There you go. All right, so right uh, there we have a, a quart of regatta cheese. So okay. for every quart... Right, we're going to use four eggs. We're going to break that. four eggs into the regatta. Now the eggs, the eggs is nice because we can use it as a binder. That's what that's going to do. Now CJ's getting a little fancy here, using just the one hand. He's Good going job. crazy. He's getting fancy. Oh yeah. Oh, messed up on the last one. I got nervous. That's not bad. Three for four. Now, we're going to take some of that spinach. It's nice and wilted. Just take a knife or whatever. Just slice it up real quick. No big deal. Boom, we take some of that. Throw it in there. That's the stuff we wilted. We're going to use all of it, Joe? Yeah, we're going to use it all. All right, so just throw it all in there. All right. Also, important, guys, make sure you ran it through a strainer or at least uh, use tongs to take it out because you don't want all that extra moisture inside of your mixture over here. Get as much of the water out of there as you can. I'm going to sprinkle the parsley. What, two handfuls? Yep. Yeah, that's good. All right, now. now. Give that a good mix. I'm going to put some grated cheese in there. Oh, almost forgot the cheese. Can't forget Can't that. Can't forget the cheese. We're going to do the whole thing? Whole thing. Might as well, right? Boom. All right. Mix that up. Nice so you get a good, you got to get a good mix in there. Make sure that those eggs are incorporated in there. And that's going to make a nice layer in your lasagna with the, with the spinach in there. So it's not just that heavy regatta cheese. You got, uh, you got some nice vegetables in there and, uh, and the eggs, the fresh parsley, the grated cheese, delicious. Look at that. Doesn't that look nice? Yeah, get that mixed up nice. There you go. Get those eggs broken down. Oh, well, gotcha. All right. There you go. We're gonna add a little bit of more, a little bit more regatta in there. Okay. Uh, just take it out. A little more, Joe. A little more, yeah. All right. All Spin right. that up. There you go. That looks nice. Mm, that looks delicious. All right, so that's the that's the regatta for the for the um, for the seafood lasagna. This is our Alfredo sauce. You can see as we're cooking it, it's getting thicker and thicker. We're now gonna prepare our seafood for the seafood lasagna. So we like to uh, we like to take the fish that we're gonna use the cod. We're gonna poach it just a little bit in a little bit of water because we want to take the water the moisture out of the fish so that when you cook your lasagna. There's not a lot of water in the bottom of the pan. The same thing with the shrimp and the same thing with the scallops. We just want to take some of that water out. 
But the fish all we're going to do, we're going to turn this up high. The fish all we're going to do is we're just going to poach it. So we're just going to take, see it's nice and thin, right? So we're just going to place it in a little bit of hot water. A few pieces at a time. And we're going to just let it poach. So by doing this, like I say, what that's going to do is it's going to take the water out of the fish. Because you know at home, if you take a piece of cod, you cook or you bake off a piece of cod or something like that, you know that it's going to, it, it has a lot of water in there. So when you cook it at the bottom of the pan, after you get done baking it, there's some water in there. So by doing this, again, I'm repeating myself, but by doing this, again, it's going to take a lot of that water out of there. And it's really not going to take very long. You know, so we're just going to put that in there and let that work. Turn that down. And then we're, uh, CJ is going to start with the shrimp. Start off with some of that garlic butter from the bread. Throw that in there. It's going to pop all over the place. So this is the same garlic butter that we use for the, uh, for the, the, the garlic bread. Get some of that shrimp in there. I'm going to go with all of it. I'm going to go all that shrimp. And then CJ, tell them what you did with the scallops, just as, just so that they're going to fit nicely in the uh, in the layer of fish. So the scallops they're really thick sometimes, and also it's going to one uh, infect, affect two things. One, your cook time might not be done, so we're going to we just slice them right there, so it's nice and uh, nice and thin, so it's not so bumpy. We're going to throw it all in there. There you go. All right. So I think Joe mentioned this already. Uh, all this ha all fish really has some sort of moisture in it. So you're going to have some excess water on the bottom. We got the strainer and this is going to take, you don't even have to cook this all the way because it's going to go in the oven. It's going to bake and that's what, the way it's going to be like that. Yeah, but you can see that, you know, you can see that this is already starting to cook. You can see the shrimp is changing color a little bit. Uh, now to get back to the fish, so what you want to do is you want to just, when you see that it's starting to poach up, it changes color. You want to just take it out, put it on a tray, right, and let the water come out of it. Oh yeah. Again, this is this has nothing to do with flavor. This is all about keeping your lasagna nice and dry, so that you know it, the because the water. If you get a lot of water in the lasagna, all it's going to do is it's going to take away from the flavor of the uh, the Alfredo sauce. Okay. It's going to take away from that. We get back to the shrimp. We get that going nice. It's important oh. to keep it moving because the stuff on the bottom, especially when you have a lot of uh, ingredients in one uh, one uh, pan. skillet, pallet, pan or whatever, uh, it's going to the bottom's going to get brown. So you just want to keep it moving, but don't make the food nervous. Just listen to it. It's going to start to sizzle. The uh, the scallops we did cut, but the shrimp we left them whole because we used. As CJ mentioned earlier, we used a uh, 2630 count, so there's really, really no need. If you if you use a bigger shrimp, you may want to butterfly. Yeah, it may want to just like butterfly it so that it's a little bit flatter, so that in between your in your, between your layers, you're not going to have a lot of bumps. You know. Side note, guys, the scallops. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, opaque. 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 That clearness, you'll start to get uh, like a nice. Hard white, like an like a eggshell white. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll go with that. And then your shrimp, obviously, the t uh, the tails and the whole thing will start to pink up a little bit on you. But as you can see, what CJ was talking about, right? See, this is important to move it around because you can see this one here, this shrimp right here, starting to cook. This one here, still very raw. There you go. Let's give it a good mix. Oh, that smells so good. Let it sit. It's It'll, that garlic butter. Oh yeah. Let it sit. It'll be quiet, and then when you see it, when you start to hear it start to sizzle a lot more, that means it's time to mix it up again. So getting back to the fish a little bit, as you can see, these are all starting to turn white. So that's basically cooked. We're gonna take this out. We're gonna let the the water drain on that that pan before we start to put our lasagna together. Oh, this, wow, this is beautiful is really cod. Good over here. We got some beautiful cod here. 
CJ, where did you say this was from? Iceland. 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 You don't see too much stuff really domestic anymore. There's a limitation on what's allowed to be fished. So most cod and hatter are coming out of Greenland and Iceland, Canada. So, so down the fish pier, you really don't see very many boats, right? Oh, no, nothing really like that. That's a time much before me. Yeah. So, yeah, so now, you know, most of the fish is coming in off of, uh, off of airplanes. JFK. JFK, oh, you know, oh, it's getting, everything's getting flown in. Years ago, I've been doing this since I've been 15 years old. I'm not going to tell you how old I am now, but I've been doing this since I've been 15. And years ago, you used to go down, used to, go down, to, the, uh, down to the fish pier and you buy directly off the boat. So you get down there with a pocket full of cash, you get the, uh, the captain of the boat, and you, you buy directly from him. So, you know, that was, a, that was actually a nicer time. A lot of stuff was done on a handshake, um, things like that. Nowadays, you can't do that. That doesn't happen anymore. Everything has to go through a, um, a, an auction house down there, and it has to go through a, th a third party for you, to, uh, for you to be able to buy your fish. So, so you see guys are starting to change color over here. The scallops are starting to get that eggshell egg white I was talking about, right, Joe? That egg shape, yep. Yeah, egg shape, egg shape or eggshell? I don't know. It don't matter anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we just got probably like, I don't know, a couple more minutes on it. And like, like we said, this doesn't have to be fully cooked because it's going to go in the oven and it's going to finish up there. You can see we got everything blanched off and the shrimp and the scallops are nicely cooked. The fish is nicely blanched off in the water. We're going to leave the water in the tray. We have our Alfredo sauce right here, all ready to go. We got the, uh, the pasta sheets, which are beautiful, all nice and fresh, already cooked, perfect. And the regatta cheese with the spinach and the fresh parsley in there. So first step, first step we're going to take and we're going to put a little bit of a layer of uh, Alfredo. Right? Nice. We're going to mix that around. That's nice. Now, when, you use, when you're using these pasta sheets that are not cooked, you need to use a little bit extra sauce because they're going to soak that up. They're going to soak that sauce up. Okay. Now we're going to go with a layer of the, uh, of the pasta. So that pasta is basically going to soak up almost all of that all of that, uh, that Alfredo sauce that's on the bottom. Beautiful. Oh, this is going to be so good. I can't wait. My mouth's watering right now. Right now. There you go. All right. So we got our three down. And then we're going to go with a layer of the regatta. There you go, Joey. So it's easier. It's easier if you use just a rubber spatula, right? We're going to go nice and heavy. But see how nice we're going to do this? We're going to get that nice and level in there. Gee, CJ, I hope we have enough room to put all this stuff. We might have to take the fish home. What do you think? You know, we got to do what we got to do. Right, Joey? That's it. As always. We'll make it work. That's the, layer, the first layer of cheese. So we're going to go three more pasta sheets. If I had to estimate, I'm going to say that the, this lasagna is going to weigh about 15, 16 pounds by the time we're done. Three more nice sheets. Perfect. All right. Then we're going to put a little bit more sauce because we want to keep these sheets nice and moist, right? Like I said, without cooking them, you got to have a lot of sauce in here because they're going to cook a little bit more when we put it in the oven and it's going to eat up all that sauce. Make sure that you make enough sauce so that you can have a little bit of uh, sauce on the side left over. Now we're going to put the fish in. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to layer this cod. So you want another one? I'm okay. As you can see, see all the water that's in there? On the bottom of this, this, uh, this dish, don't know whether you can see that or not, but there's an awful lot of water in there, and we do not want that in here, right? So we're going to layer the fish in here, and you know, if it breaks up a little bit, it doesn't matter. 
It's all going in the same place, right? We're not trying to get real fancy here. We're one just trying to make some good food. One time, I didn't leave the water in the tray, and I found myself trying to tip the lasagna tray, and I lost the whole tray. It was a shame. <laughs> that is a shame. <laughs> it was a shame. That's a big shame. All right, so you can see, look at that. You see all that water there? We do not want that in there, right? So that's the layer of fish. You don't want to just drop that in there because there's also some water left in there. Now you can see, look at that shrimp and scallops. Oh my God. My goodness. This is like mama used to make, you know what I'm saying? You go into a restaurant and you order a slice of this, you've got to be looking at about $30. No question. Maybe more. You want to go all one layer, Joe? Yeah, go, go with it all. Actually, you can save a little bit to put on the top. All right. Let's leave it just like that on the top. All right. All right let's go. Look at that. That's beautiful. So now we want to press it down. We want to make sure that it's nice and, nice and flat, right? Okay. Now we're going to go with another layer of pasta. Okay. The pasta vazu. You know what pasta vazu is? Anybody know what that is? Pasta vazu is pasta with beans. I didn't know that, but yeah. I, I do know paisan. Paisan is friend, right? French? Nah, it's Italiano. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said it's French. Friend. All right. Hey, paisan, you know? All right. All right. I learned that from like good fellows, I think. I don't know where I learned it. All right, so now, okay, so now we're on layer number three, right? Oh, man, these sheets are really beautiful. You can could, you could almost smell the egg in there. All right. So now we're going to put the rest of this regatta in there. We're going all the way, right? We're going all the way. Why? What are we going to do? Take it home? No. No, we ain't taking it home. There you go. That looks so good. Damn. Look at how nice. See how nice I can use this spatula? It's almost like, you know, like doing a cake, you know? All right, now we're going to go another layer. A little layer. And this is the last layer right here. You think we should put that in here or put it on the top? Let's get crazy. Yeah? Let's All get right, crazy. crazy. Let's get crazy. Wow, look how nice that is. You kidding me? This is a five-star lasagna. At least five. We might have to go six, seven. I think it's a 10. It's a dime. At least a dime. Is it a dime? It's a dime. It's a dime. All right. All right. All right. See all that? See all that? See all that juice? We don't need that in here. We're going to press this down. All right. I'm going to tell you, every single bite is going to have either a shrimp and a scallop in there or some fish. Every single bite. All right. All righty. So... Boom. So we got our last three sheets now. So everybody, let's keep in mind now, right? This is gonna go, we're gonna and we're gonna add again another layer of our Alfredo. Beautiful. Really nice. This stuff smells delicious. Oh my god. Mm. And then of course we're gonna top it with some mozzarella, right? Uh, absolutely. All right. What do you think we're doing here? Here you go. All right. So now save a little bit of that because we're gonna need a little bit for the garlic bread. Okay. Oh, that looks so good. Ooh. All right, good. Just a little bit. Okay. There you go. Perfect. So right. we're gonna get this. We're gonna get this into the oven. We got the oven preheated at 350. We're gonna put this in. Basically, all you really need to do is wait until it's hot all the way through, because everything's cooked. Right. Good question. Some yeah. of our audience members might be wondering: Do we need to cover it? No. No. Nope. 
Do it uncovered. Beautiful. CJ is now going to do the final preparation on garlic bruschetta bread, right? So as you can see here, what we did here was we baked this for about, I don't know, 10 or 12 minutes at 350. Then we put it under the broiler for maybe two minutes. And we got a nice, crispy uh, garlic bread. Now, I mean, to eat that just the way it is would be delicious. No question. But we're going to make it a little bit fancy now. Another step. Another step. So what we have here is we have our, uh, our chopped up tomatoes, red onion, uh, black pepper, olive oil, and grated cheese. And here we have a little bit of mozzarella cheese. So go ahead, CJ. Okay, so we're just going to go on the top. I put a glove on to make it easy. I don't want to. I don't want to do all that. You just want to go enough. Make sure you got enough at least. On top. Mm, delish. That smells so good. I'm gonna come back to that one. We're gonna make sure I got enough for all of them first. Mm. This smells really good. Looks delish. I'll tell you what. If, if you wanted to just take this here, throw a couple of cooked shrimp in there, put it on top of the bread, you got dinner. You don't even need the lasagna. But it's nice to have but a lasagna. But it's nice to have a lasagna, lasagna too. Got a little pocket here. We're just going to stuff that pocket in there. Nice. Okay. Like that. I'm going to come back. We're just going to use all of it. I mean, we came so far, right? Yeah. No quitting over here. Nice. Okay. All right. So that's all done. Get the nice bruschetta right on there. Now, we're going to put a little bit of, you know, the grated mutts on top of it. Sprinkle. Just a little Sprinkle. Just a little bit. Just top it off because, I mean... Cheese makes everything nice. Cheese is better on everything. Doesn't matter. Eggs, cereal. It's all good. Just a little bit. You don't want to. We got a lot of cheese. Just a little bit. Man, how good does that look? You said you were more excited about this than you are the lasagna? Yeah. Wow. He's crazy. Well, I, I, I always love lasagna, but this <laughs> is a new thing for me. This is, this is different. Yeah. That's this is different. different. Look at this. So take a look at that. So that's your, uh, that's your garlic bread bruschetta with a little bit of shredded mozz on top of it. And uh, to finish that off, we're just going to throw that under the broiler until the... We, have, we now have our finished product. So we have a beautiful seafood lasagna, three layers, regatta cheese, spinach, cod, shrimp, scallops, um, fresh parsley, you can see on the top, little mozzarella on the top. We baked this for about uh, 40 minutes, and then we, uh, we put it under the broiler for just a minute just to brown it up. For an appetizer we made today, we made a uh, garlic bread bruschetta, which we made the garlic bread first. We put a uh, uh, butter, garlic, grated cheese, salt and pepper. Uh, on the bread, we baked that just to crisp it up a little bit. Then we topped it with the bruschetta, the tomatoes, the red onion, um, the parsley, and then we put again put a little bit of mozzarella cheese on the top, and put it underneath the uh, the broiler just to just to melt it down a little bit. We prepared a meal for you that you can't refuse. refuse.